Start with, imagine a 3D motion graphic animation of, and then describe the scene, make it specific. <laughs> right, but include the scene. Whoa. Today, we're gonna be building high quality professional motion graphic animations using AI. This is a high value skill that will help you bring coherency and cohesiveness to your personal branding, as well as a skill that you can take with you into the freelance world to help you get paid. I'll be going over my full workflow and how I generate endless variations of these animations. If you stick around to the end, I'll be showing you my simple method for creating these unique little watermark looping logo animations like the one that you see here in the corner. My name is Tyler Burnaby, better known as JBooks Creative. I've been working as a generative AI specialist for over four years and have built a platform of over 600,000 followers across my social media by doing so. I've worked with clients such as Will Smith, Neo, Johnny Dang, Raekwon, Coachella, Microsoft, and the list goes on. So if you're ready to create high quality logo animations, get into it. All right, guys. So for this use case and this example, what I'm going to be building in this video is a new logo animation for myself. However, the skills and the process I'm going to go over is transferable regardless of exactly what you guys are trying to do. You just have to adapt it for your particular project. So step one, where we always have to start is mood boarding and gathering references. And if you've seen my previous videos or you've come to my live streams, you know that my favorite site is cosmos.so. This is pretty much just like Pinterest, but for designers. This is my Cosmos profile. And basically all I would do is search glitch logos. This is where I would start. And then as I'm going through this, I would just create a new mood board and I would add imagery that I like to it. But I already did that. And that is this logo inspiration mood board that I created because I really wanted my design to have a glitchy feel. So all I did was go through and gather references. And you're gonna do this until you have like a solid 25 to 30 images to choose from so that we can rotate through images in the next step for which we are going over to ChatGPT so that we can use our reference imagery and write our prompts for endless variations of the logo. Let's go. For step two, we are going to be working in ChatGPT. So on the left, we have our ChatGPT open, and on the right, we have our Cosmos mood board that we made with our logo inspiration. In ChatGPT, I am going to be using my Sora prompter that I built. Now, this prompter is available to everyone in my gold tier and above over on my Patreon. If you don't want to go through the hassle of building something like this yourself, this along with all my other prompters, as well as a huge library of mood boards and tutorials are there on my Patreon for you guys. So what we're going to do with the prompter is we're going to give it about four to five images that really catch our eye from our mood board over here. So I gave it these five images that you see up top right here. And the prompt I gave it with those images is using the combined style of what you see in these five images I've given you. We need to design a highly detailed logo of the word J books creative. Very important to put your typography in quotations in the prompt. The logo needs to be a mixture of these different glitch elements. However, most of it should be on an all black background and the focus should be entirely on the wording and the letters. Give me four different prompt variations. So my Sora prompter is trained to give me the prompts in a code box for easy copy and pasting. And all we're going to do with these four variations is copy them and then take them over to old Sora and run them in the image generator all at the same time, which is going to give us 16 different images all at once from four different variants. And my prompter even recommends ideas and places you could go next with the iterations. So let's go ahead and see what these look like over in the image generator. So now we are in 
old Sora image generator, aka the ChatGPT image model on the left. And on the right, we have our ChatGPT because now we're gonna iterate back and forth between the image generation and the prompting. So these four prompts right here gave us these four variations. So we got variation number one, Variation number two, which ended up being my favorite, and this is the one that I wanted to iterate on. I wasn't really a fan of number three, and I wasn't, it got a little too abstract with number four, but that's fine because the point of the first round of prompting is to visually see something that you can then grab that thread and follow it to the end of your idea. So this was prompt number two right here. I then told ChatGPT, let's iterate on prompt number two. Let's make the principal colors of this be a gradient of blue to purple. Remove any type of red or RGB. I didn't want this red line. I'm a very, if you can't tell from my lights, I'm a very blue and purple type of person. It's just my gradient. And so what that gave me were these images. Now this was much closer to what I was looking for. I then took that same prompt and what I did here was I took four of the images from my mood board and I uploaded them into ChatGPT or the image generator and I used the exact same prompt. However, before the prompt, what I wrote was mix the styles of the reference images into the output of this prompt. So not only are we taking the prompt that ChatGPT wrote us using different aspects of the same or similar reference imagery we gave it from our mood board, but we're now reinforcing that by actually giving it the reference imagery. And something I've learned just from prompting all these various image models, you can get the most interesting results that you couldn't even imagine or think of by mashing up multiple reference images. And it's something that I constantly, constantly do in the never ending quest to build outputs that are unique and stand apart from other people's. Now, that ultimately gave us this, and I really liked this one right here because I liked how it combined the X and the C in the middle, and this was dope. So with this, we're gonna take it to the next step, which is the animation. For the animation, we are going to be using Google's VO 3.1 Fast Model because VO is phenomenal at these professional motion graphic animations. On the right, we are still in ChatGPT. We live in ChatGPT. And this time we're using my VO 3.1 prompter, also available on the Patreon, which outputs the prompts in Google's timestamp format, which breaks the actions down into two second increments, which gives us so much control. Now, the key thing here is we are going to be doing start frame end frame in VO. And you can see down here for the start frame, all I'm giving VO is a 16 by nine black rectangle. It is just an all black square. And then the end frame is the logo. Now, the prompt I told the VO 3.1 prompter is, write me four prompt variations that describe an extremely detailed 3D motion graphic animation starting with an all black background that you see in image one and ends with the glitch logo in image two. The animation that reveals the glitch logo should involve some type of rippling undulation glitches that reveal the logo sequentially from left to right or top to bottom. Do not make the undulation ripple throughout the entire video like a water ripple. It should be very focused on only moving through the shape of the words along the glitch effects. Not all the prompts need to involve this, but at least one needs to be focused on this effect. Give me four variations of this logo reveal. And then per usual, it gives me all four variations in code boxes for easy copy and pasting. And this very first one that it gave me was insane. Look at this. That that's the undulation that I wanted. That like water ripple, that's what undulation means and it's a key word that I use a lot for effects like this, but also prompt variations that it gave me were just as cool 
in their own right. Like, this is... These are all so sick, man. And look at this one. This one is crazy. Like, bro. What? What with the little, like, RGB light refraction things? Especially this one. That's like the Apple liquid glass with the reflection. It's just so good. So, I hope you guys can see exactly what having a good prompter that you trained and not just asking ChatGPT for these random prompts every time you want one, like how much power and creative potential this unlocks. I will say I came to it with an actual idea of what I wanted, but these are things that the more you do it, the better you get at it. The key thing here is whatever color the background of your logo is, start with a solid color frame as your start frame. That way it's just a smooth animation. So that is how you can create endless variations of these insane motion graphic animations. Now let's move into the bonus tip. So the bonus, the cool little looping watermark that you've seen in the corner of this video the entire time. Same process, the only consideration you have to take for this one is that whatever text you generate for the watermark needs to be on a solid black background and you should not have any transparent part in the actual letters themselves or it's not going to look great. So I generated this kind of more pixely JBooks Creative with the gradient going across it in ChatGPT. Same process as we went through before. And then I animated it and I said that the wave undulated and the pixels dripped off of it. Same thing VO 3.1 prompter. Now, the key thing with this one is that we are doing the first frame and last frame both as the logo image. That way you get the perfect loop out of it. And then, despite what the thumbnail says, we still have to use After Effects. Haha. <laughs> so, going into After Effects, what we do is we take the logo in here, and this is super, super simple. So, the reason why we want this on a black background is so that we can simply add a luma key and key out the dark section to put it on transparency. And then that way, when we hit play now, it goes through, it drips, and it's just boom it's it's transparent you can put this on anything. What I did was I added a plugin called Deep Glow for an extra little glow effect. When you export this from After Effects, when you send this to your render queue, you want to make sure you click on where it says lossless and make sure the format is QuickTime and change the channels to RGB plus alpha. If you do not change it to RGB plus alpha, it will export on a black background. The RGB plus alpha will export it on a transparent background and put it on anything you want like what you see on this video in the corner here and you have a simple easy looping watermark and you can create hundreds or thousands of these if you want so that's going to conclude this tutorial i sincerely hope that you guys learned something today if you would like to continue learning from me you can find me on patreon at patreon.com backslash jbooks creative you can find me on all social media channels at jbooks creative i do live streams every other friday here on youtube and over on twitch new youtube tutorials every monday i appreciate you guys go make something cool if you learned it from me tag me when you do so i can see it and come join the discord we have a wonderful free public discord community everyone is super helpful super creative come join it the link will be in the description jbooks creative appreciate you guys catch you in the next one peace